Like much of Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, the Danger Room mode is a mode which isn't really properly explained by the developers. The same way when you're using characters, there's no tooltips for the extreme attacks and basics, something I really can't believe is actually the case at all. But yeah, the Danger Room is pretty complicated as well in regards to the lack of information we have. So over the, the last day since the updates came out, I've been reading in the Reddit on the Discord and I've actually been playing a lot of Danger Room myself to get a grip of it and with the system set up the way it is it doesn't look to be as grindy as people first feared and it's probably something where you can knock out the season rewards without Nintendo Online in a couple of days at most. So in this video various different sections we cover. We're going to talk about why should you do Danger Room, what rewards do you get, how do you access this without Nintendo Online. This is something that I've not tested myself but I have read on Reddit so fingers crossed this should work what modes are available in Danger Room and which difficulty you should be playing and how you actually access those difficulties. Once we've covered all that, I'll give some general tips for the actual Danger Room missions as well. But we'll start off talking about why should you actually do Danger Room. So this here is the reason you're going to want to do the Danger Room. You've got the five X-Men costumes. Now you can actually get alternative colour versions of these available via the Shield Store. Although the original colours, I would say probably with the exception of Magneto, the original colours are far superior. So that's the reason I would say you really want to unlock these. They look pretty amazing. Old Man Logan looks incredible. I was about to list other ones that look incredible, but they all look absolutely fantastic. So you're definitely going to want to unlock them. So how do you actually do this? First you need to find out how to access a season pass, something a lot of people have been having trouble with. So let's talk about that now and I'll actually show it off. So firstly what you want to do is you need to use menu to select to go into the Rise of the Phoenix DLC. So we can see we've got this here. Now if you've got Nintendo Online, I've got that myself, all I had to do was actually just press the X button and then from there I had to click the right thumbstick. You can see it says data update. Now when you click this, it will take a moment or two to connect as they connect through the Nintendo Online and then it will show you these rewards. So players that don't have Nintendo Online are pretty annoyed at the moment because it looks like you can't actually access this season pass. But from what I've heard on Reddit, and you can test it and let me know in the comments below, it's just actually a case of playing a Danger Room match if you don't have Nintendo Online and that will trigger the system to then load the season rewards. So if I click here, if you don't have Nintendo Online, what you're going to want to do is you go to Versus System as opposed to Versus Player. So that's how you actually unlock the Season Pass. Let's quickly bring it back up again. We know we've got the five costumes. that You can actually get the rewards down the bottom. You can see the ones in grey. You actually get them if you don't have the DLC pack. But if you do have the pack, you're getting additional rewards here. We can actually see, scroll along and down, there's uh, the Psylocke House of M costume that we've seen a moment ago. We'll keep moving along here. You've got Nightcrawler, House of M once again. And then further along, you've got Storm. That's the punk rock look. And then the final two, where are they? They're hiding here. You've got Wolverine, who looks amazing as Old Man Logan. And then you've got Magneto, the Marvel now look as well. So that's all the rewards. It goes up to tier 30, but you can actually get to tier 30 exceptionally quick. So I'm now going to talk about the, the different modes available and which one you're really going to want to use and how you accrue points to go up each tier. So we've got the two different modes here then, of course you've got the Versus system for people that don't have Nintendo Online, if you do have it, you've got Versus Player now, it can be a little bit tricky to set up a room and it can be a little bit slow, but the rewards you actually get are doubled if you go up against other players as opposed to just the system. Now if we go into Versus system, just to show off here, so we're going to click on Offline and then from here you can choose your program, so you've got Alpha, Beta, Gamma and then you've got Delta. Now as they go up there you actually get more points because the difficulty of the actual program goes up as well. Now it's not entirely clear and um, so many people have got different explanations of how it works, how you actually access each of the difficulties but what I've heard is roughly speaking in order to access the alpha you'll need characters at level 50, to access beta you need characters at level 100, gamma is 150 and then delta is 200. 
but I also believe that if you're playing it online against other players and you've got lower level characters, you can actually be invited to the hardest difficulty delta, which would be level 200, and all your characters actually scale up to that. You won't have as much alliance enhancement points, you might not have all the skills maxed out, so you may actually struggle. Now, what rewards do you actually get for the different difficulties? So let's just jump back to the, the tier system and the season pass once more here. So you can see up the top right here that each tier of the season pass consists of five little pips that you can fill up. Once you fill them up, you then jump onto the next tier and you get the rewards. And you get dual rewards if you've actually got the DLC pack as well. Now, if we look at the points you get, so if you were to play offline and you win an alpha match which is the lowest, you get one point or one little pip to fill up that tier. So you need to win five matches to go up a tier. If you do beta, you get two points. Gamma is three points, and then Delta is five points. So if you're playing offline, if you don't have Nintendo online, then you would need to win 30 matches, and that would be you actually filling out the entire tier system and unlocking everything with as little as 30 matches. But that has to be at the Delta difficulty, and you'll, you won't be able to get invited to a match, so you'll have to up at level 200 to access that. If you're playing online via the PvP mode, and it can be a bit trickier because you're going up against real players rather than just the, the AI which isn't the smartest, then the points actually double. So for winning an alpha match, you would get two of the little pips. For winning beta, you get four. Gamma is six, and delta is as much as ten. So if you play online up at the delta difficulty, you only need to win 15 matches and the remaining 45 days and a match probably takes between about I would say maybe 15 and 20 minutes to play but if you win 15 matches then that will be enough to actually unlock the entire tier system that's it done you don't have to worry about having to grind every day to get the costumes or anything like that for the losses I think it's roughly half the amount of points you get for losses so you will still be making progress as well but of course the aim is to actually win now with that covered let's actually talk about some of the the tips I've managed to pick up while I've been playing as well. So when I did initially load into Danger Room, it was a mode I really didn't enjoy at all, but the more I'm playing it, the more I'm actually enjoying it, and there is a fair amount of strategy you can actually employ, and you can see in certain matches when you have teams that are all using the right strategy, you can absolutely smash the opposite team. So the first thing I would say, and this is really important, you'll see it during this gameplay, but at certain points during the Danger Room, you'll get different objectives that can come up. Now, some of them can be quite simple. This one here, we can see, for example, it's guard six times. Now, what this will do is it'll modify your extreme charge rate. You have some that may be dodge a certain amount of times or jump or take out a certain amount of enemies. Now, lots of different bonuses they can give you. Some of them won't be that useful. Let's just say you're running a melee team and it may actually give you a boost to a ethereal damage. So that's useless. You don't want to waste any time going for that. Just let another team get it, even though it may be a small boost for them. Some of them can be absolute game changers. Now, the ones that would be game changers are the likes of your stun and your confuse and your freeze. I've seen when that actually happens against myself, because you can't see the other teams, you're not sure how it's affecting them, but when it happens against myself, on some occasions I'm frozen for around about 15-20 seconds, and really that can be enough to completely change a match. So keep an eye on these objectives, and go for the ones that sound like they are going to be more powerful and they're more suited to your team as well. Now, the different kind of stages you get, you can see this is defeat a set amount of enemies. There's one particular stage type, but it says defeat all enemies and get to the end of the stage as well. Now, you don't have to defeat all enemies, you just have to get to the end of the stage, and then when you're at the end, a set amount of enemies will spawn, and you need to defeat those in particular. So what you want to do, if you've got a flying character or such, you're just going to fly straight to the end of the level, get the final spawn of enemies appearing, and then just smash them down, and you'll do the stage in no time. Now, when you go on to each of the stages, because there will be between three or four of them, your health and your energy actually refreshes, so you don't have to manage them in any way, you don't have to conserve your energy until the next stage. So really, just go ham and go all in and focusing on 
winning the actual stage that you are on. Now, if you're playing PvP online and you do get downed, it can be hard for your teammates to actually see you being downed with how much is going on. So make use of the emotes. You hold down the, the left trigger button and then you can fire off an emote. So try and assign an emote that would say you would need assistance so they actually know that. And really, I think that's all the, the tips you really need to know to get a good head start on it. If you've got any tips you've been using yourself to get head do let me know but that's a danger room system hopefully all this made sense because it was quite a lot to run over and team ninja uh, again i've done a terrible job of explaining it but as always i hope the video has been helpful have a, a great christmas tomorrow if you are celebrating otherwise have a great wednesday and i'll see you all again soon